What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's Earthmaster here on this beautiful Sunday night, September 18th, 2022. It's about 7.52 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 1.9 earthquake all the way up into Alaska. It did have a 4. Point, uh, I believe a 4.4, 4.5 kicking up there around the Fairbanks area uh, just a short time ago. All right, let's go ahead and look at the latest activity here. Going to start off with uh, Yellowstone uh, up there in Wyoming. You guys see all the earthquake activity kicking up there tonight? Throughout the last 24 hours, in fact, quite a bit of movement kicking up here at Yellowstone National Park, including a 3.9 that kicked up here earlier this morning time frame. Since then, we've seen quite a bit of earthquake activity. Uh, uncertain on the amount so far, but uh, I'm sure the USGS will get to them tomorrow sometime, Monday morning. So far, they're only listing a 3.9 on the map, but uh, I guarantee you there is much, much more in the way of uh, earthquake activity ramping up there around Yellowstone. And the majority of these are below, I believe they're below the uh, 2.0 threshold, but uh, except for that 3.9, pretty strong earthquake up there. Yeah, moderately strong, right? Uh, sometimes Yellowstone does get these earthquake swarms, and uh, today is one of them. Kind of been an ongoing thing, in fact, over the last couple last couple weeks. Uh, any uh, migration of the swarm doesn't look like it. Uh, looks like, for the most part, the swarm is confined here to the northwestern corner of Yellowstone National Park. And uh, I can probably guarantee there's probably a good 70 or 80, maybe more earthquakes in the 24-hour uh, map there around the Maple Creek area. All right, looking at the latest info here from the USGS. Start up here in Alaska where we've seen that uh, four-pointer come in just outside the Fairbanks area. 4.5 centered about 50 miles or so west of Fairbanks in central Alaska. Uh, I know I've seen a few folks uh, reported filling that earthquake. Looks like a few folks did report uh, it in there to the USGS uh, around the Fairbanks area as well. Some uh, light to moderate shaking being reported throughout the region of the Fairbanks, Alaska area. Uh, there's a little fault system that runs through here. Quite a few of them uh, north of the Alaska range. But it's been a little while since we've seen uh, uh, this type of magnitude within this area and this broadly felt in the Fairbanks area. Uh, the rest of Alaska, some uh, scattered activity throughout the Cook Inlet area and also around Anchorage. No major swarms, though, to take note of. Uh, at all throughout the Aleutian Trench. Uh, our other hot spot right now, still still cranking out these earthquakes out here around Taiwan. Uh, the western portion here of the Philippine Plate, seeing quite the amount of movement here over the last couple days. Let's bring up a little tally here of uh, the last seven days, 4.5 and above. Now, remember, there's definitely been some more uh, below that as far as the threshold goes, but 22 earthquakes. And the largest one so far going to be the 6.9 that kicked off there early this morning time frame. Uh, prior to that, uh, about a day or so ago, there was a 6.5, which was actually a four shock. Quite a few fives in there as well, far as the magnitudes go. And lots of fours, and I'm sure many, many below the uh, 4.5 threshold. So we're still kind of watching that because we do have a little bit of migration of the swarming how far is the uh, pressure transfer up here towards the East China Sea? Uh, this area, this little subduction zone right here, uh, seeing some movement. Looks like uh, that one coming in earlier this morning time frame. We haven't really seen any further activity in this area since this morning. So uh, either way, I'd still keep an eye on this area because there's uh, quite a bit of pressure brewing out there along the Philippine Plate um, just something to watch pretty closely. Over here around the Solomon Islands and the um, Tonga area, majority of this earthquake, some older movement. Latest one uh, earlier, much earlier this afternoon time frame of 4.6 in the Fiji Islands area, 512 kilometers deep for that area. Nothing going on yet around the uh, Japan Trench northward to the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. We did see one earthquake here this afternoon of 4.5 at 53 kilometers deep, just off the coast of Japan into the Japan Trench. 
I'm still got my still got my eyeballs here on the uh, Curl Kamachaka Trench, watching that area pretty closely for some larger scale activity. But then again, a lot of this movement here pretty much has come to a stop, a halt, so to speak. Uh, and when that happens, we need to watch these quiet zones that really haven't seen too much earthquake activity in the past couple weeks or the past couple months. And those areas include the Curl Kamchaka Trench and the Solomon Islands, although they did have one earthquake down here just off uh, the Santa Cruz Islands area, 5.5 coming in. Uh, starting to fill in that seismic gap, so to speak. Sometimes uh, those seismic gaps uh, kind of help with, uh, you know, not going to say predicting, but possibly forecasting where the next earthquake is going to happen. Uh, read a couple good lectures at, in college uh, in the class that I'm in uh, recently, and they talked about the uh, the forecasting possibilities. Um, you know, it's not set in stone. A lot of people think it is, but uh, there's uh, definitely some, some issues with it. It's not 100% guaranteed when it comes to the forecasting of the earthquakes but a lot of folks kind of wonder um what do we look for uh, far as earthquake activity goes you know maybe maybe uh predicting or at least for it shouldn't say predicting but forecasting an earthquake there's a lot of different uh things that we watch for it could be swarms uh some minor earthquake swarms in the area it could be uh, uh gps measurements showing quite a bit of stress uh, in the area of the fault systems. Uh, also, I don't think I've mentioned it here on this channel, but radon gas emissions can occur um, down from down below from breaking rocks. Uh, also, a drop in the water table or change in water quality can also um, possibly be a foretell sign of some earthquake activity about ready to happen. So there's a couple different things. I always look at earthquake swarms. Uh, in certain areas and around certain fault systems uh, to look at the potential of seeing a, a, you know, an earthquake in that area. All right, uh, look at this activity here around the Himalayas. The majority of this movement um, looks like from older, a little bit earlier this afternoon time frame. We haven't seen anything within the last couple hours, uh, but there has been a little bit of activity up here northern side of the Himalayas. Some very small uh, earthquake activity, nothing big popping off yet in that region. Uh, and this activity here from last night and early this morning time frame, the Atlantic Ocean. We've got one earthquake way up here, way off the uh, coast of Greenland, around the Jane Mar uh, Mayan area. 4.3 kicking off here earlier this afternoon time frame around the Greenland Sea. Not a whole lot in the South America region. This is just... Uh, one of those quiet zones, so to speak. And this is a major player here in producing some large quakes and accumulating quite a bit of slip rate. But now it's uh, pretty quiet. Puerto Rico Trench, most of this movement here from earlier this afternoon. Not a whole lot of uptick in activity here today. Things kind of dying off along that area. The states, some movement outside of the uh, volcanoes here around Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. A little bit of activity through the out, uh, throughout the uh, valley there into Oregon. Northern California, a couple spotty earthquakes up there. Nothing major going on. Down here around the uh, San Andreas Fault. This is the uh, uh, peninsula section, is what it's called. South of the Bay Area. Looking at uh, a little bit of swarming activity kicking up here in the mountains. Right up against the crest here uh, of the uh, San Andreas Fault. Just a couple small microquakes there. It's a movement along the creeping section as well. I was watching this area down here, <clears throat> down here off of the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment on the North American side of the plate boundary. Uh, pretty much all morning and afternoon time frame. Things have kind of mellowed out here. Uh, last earthquake was at 0124 UTC time. Uh, and that uh, kind of puts that at about an hour and a half, two hours ago was that last earthquake. So things kind of mellowing out, but not completely. I still think we need to watch the West Coast. I am going to leave that up tonight as far as the earthquake watch goes on the stream. Uh, just still been quite a bit of earthquake activity uh, along the West Coast in some uh, swarming fashion there in certain areas. 
Um, let's see. There's that 3.9 up in Yellowstone. Let's see what else we got. Look at the rest of the country. Super duper quiet, man. Not a whole lot going on there. Check out the trimmer map here tonight and see what we got. As far as movement along the Cascadia subduction zone, we got 178 epicenters of trimmer, mostly confined to the Oregon area, about the southern or the central edge, or central portion of the Cascadia. Uh, somewhat of a good uptick, 178 uh, epicenters. Let's go ahead and check out volcanic seismicity map at the Mount Rainier area, since we have been seeing a little bit of microquake activity up there listed on the map. So we're going to check out the uh, three component uh, broadband station here around Camp Muir and see what we have listed up here. Um, not for sure what that is. Doesn't look like earthquake activity. Possibly. Maybe rockfall. Uh, look at those S waves there from the 6.9 in Taiwan earlier this morning time frame. Holy smokes. Just goes to show you how those surface waves can travel uh, pretty distantly. Uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, it's kind of spotty. Um, I can't say that all of this is earthquake activity. It kind of looks like uh, maybe some rock falls or something uh, going on there at the uh, Mount Rainier area. Earthquakes are distinct, kind of those type of fashion. And then again, maybe not. Maybe these could be earthquakes, just uh, kind of an ongoing swarm. We'll have to dig into that, check it out, and see what the uh, PNSN folks have to say about that. All right, uh, let's see, solar weather activity. Kind of burned out today. I had some rain and some thunderstorms here in California today. Got my adrenaline pumping, and now I'm coming back down from the uh, the adrenaline rush. Get that tired feeling. It's cold, it's windy. Got some more showers and possible thunderstorms overnight here in California, so I'm, I'm uh, pretty excited, but I do want to get a little sleep as well. Uh, current solar flare detection shows some movement or uh, some activity in the C flare category. A couple horns there kicking up on the graph. I believe that's coming from a uh, far side sunspot. Going to be this one right here, kind of peeking around the corner. It does look pretty impressive, at least from here. As far as the dynamics of being off the surface of the sun there, just kind of uh, looking pretty uh, dramatic in a way. Looking at the magnetic field, though, really, really can't see it. Has can't really view it yet. Uh, possibly tomorrow, this time or uh, in the morning, should be able to view this for an update and uh, get a little bit better look at the magnetic field there with the uh, sunspot, which is probably going to be 3104. A couple old sunspots scooting around the bin off the uh, western limb. Got 3102 popping here, but not all that active. Pretty uh, weak sunspots that are facing Earth right now. I think our better chance could be uh, some activity on the eastern limb as it rotates around. 90% chance of a C flare tonight, or uh, uh, for right now. 20% chance of an M flare, X flare, around 5% chance. Not for sure where they're getting these from, but uh, that's what they have there. There's that M2.6 that kicked off earlier. That was from that uh, departing 3098 sunspot, which is long, long gone. Here's a little bit better look at the far side sunspot here. Of course, our view cuts off right here around this white uh, line. But we get a little peek here from this uh, instrument, uh, the spacecraft. that has got a little bit better angle and view. And uh, it's looking pretty awesome far as the... Uh, far as the... Uh, as far as it looks, I sh should say, but we don't know exactly until it rotates in the view and get a little bit better uh, angle at the magnetic fields, which we'll, we'll kind of watch for tomorrow morning, see if we got uh, a little bit clearer view. Uh, no major coronal holes facing us. It looks like 25 is... Uh, yeah, it's kind of lined up here within view, I believe. That could enhance some uh, solar wind stream in the coming days, coming nights. Coronal hole number 25. Right now, green across the board, though. Pretty minimal conditions with uh, solar weather way down there as far as the KP indexes go. Uh, a little bit of amplification here on the speed of the solar wind. But uh, aside from that, things look pretty stable and minimal. Alrighty, uh, what else do we have here, folks? I believe that's about it. Going to call it a night and... Uh,
enjoy the rest of the rain overnight and the morning time frame. I think we got some rain coming up tomorrow as well. So hope everyone has a good night. Uh, again, I'm going to leave up the uh, West Coast Earthquake Watch overnight uh, just because we haven't really seen any um, adjustment westward far as the uh, stability of the plate systems go. Um, most of the activity is uh, hitting Taiwan like crazy. There is some movement uh, into the Kermadec Trench area in New Zealand, a couple threes down there, and uh, it looks like a 4.6 as well around Fiji. But I'm um, leaving up the West Coast Earthquake Watch for now. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it overnight and uh, see how the activity uh, either uh, uh, picks up or, or declines, and we'll go from there tomorrow. Have a good night, folks. Catch you guys later, and stay safe out there. Peace out.